Hi there. Um, we had someone from the YouTube live chat, Team Skeptic, um, ask us a few minutes ago if we could demonstrate the Coriolis effect. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so uh, to be to be completely honest, I wasn't 100% uh, sure what the Coriolis exactly how it what the, the what the definition of the Coriolis effect is. So I kind of read on the Wikipedia article to kind of see a little bit of what it's all about. And so you had the, the, the traditional Coriolis effect that people think of, which is like you flush a toilet and seems to go in one direction. Um, it actually is not the case. If you keep reading this article, that's actually not, um, that actually is not what causes um, the water to spin in one direction or the other direction. However, there is something called a Coriolis force. And it's this, they're kind of showing it here in the Wikipedia article, this perceived um, rotation. Uh, it, it's almost as if an object appears to have uh, inertial rotation if you're stuck in its frame of reference. So. Back here in symmetry, I kind of tried to reproduce this this kind of what, what they're kind of doing here. And again, as it describes here, um, it's an inertial force um, that appears to act on an object in motion. So it's like when you're sitting on top of this disc, the object will appear to have rotation. But if you're sitting outside that frame, you're kind of planked on some other frame of reference, um, and the disc is rotating in front of you, it will appear to move straight. So here in symmetry, what I've done is I've just created a very simple um, kind of reproducing that Wikipedia article, a, a simple case of, a, of, a, um, of an object flying straight. So this, this, this disc here is rotating and it has no friction on it, so it's not, it's not operating in any sort of way um, uh, on, this, on this ball. But we're using it as a, we're going to be using it as a frame of reference. And when I hit play, I basically inject a, a force into this, into this little sphere here that's going to kind of move it straight across this disc. And as you can see, um, when I hit play, you can see that it's moving straight across the disc. So even though the disc is rotating, oops, the um, the ball is kind of moving in a straight direction across it. Now watch what happens when we switch our frame. I'm going to actually slow down time here so we can kind of visualize this better. Um, so again, in slow motion here, the ball appears to move straight across this disc when we accelerate it, just as we expect, because it's being kind of flung in that direction. However, look what happens when, when we switch to the frame of reference. So I've taken this camera that's kind of crazily rotating around it, and I've placed it so that it moves on the disc, with the disc. When we do that, look what happens. The, um, and I'm going to slow down time even more. This sphere appears to rotate from this frame of reference. This is the, us standing on this disc. It appears to rotate with this inertial force. And it doesn't exist. It's not actually there, the inertial force. But from our perspective, it looks like there is. And so the green lines in this case are its actual motion in the, in the space. It's straight. But from this frame of reference, it looks like there's this curved inertial um, uh, momentum that's being added to this object. And you can actually calculate it. If we look in the, the Wikipedia article down here, they, they show you how to calculate this force. It's two times the mass of the object, in this case, this little sphere times its linear velocity and then taking the cross product of the angular momentum or, or angular velocity of this um, of this disk. That's what I do kind of in here. If I go look inside here, the, the code. I do exactly what that what the article says. And it produces this angular momentum, this this frame, this perceived angular force um, that is basically describing this this path of rotation here, even though um, from an outsider standpoint the object is actually moving in a straight line. So again, this is the Coriolis effect. It's this kind of angular momentum, angular uh, velocity that's added that appears to be on, uh, um, rotating an object when your frame of reference is equal to the um, to the rotation of the frame of reference of the rotating uh, of the surface that it's, you're relative to. So in this case, this disk that we're standing on.